Lincoln Memorial. It honors women from the Revolutionary War up to the current Iraq and Afghanistan wars. It's open daily. You are free to go inside. You know, ever since John F. Kennedy was buried here, burials have increased by 400%. Space is at a premium. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a few moments as we move forward here for those larger sized headstones. Therefore, that's all. Take a moment and look on the right side. On your right side, on all the available land left, we only use government sized headstones. And by the way, keep looking to your right. You're looking at the back of the headstone. You can tell that because the location numbers are on the back at the top. Now, obviously, you see writing on some of them. That writing that you're looking at, those are either the spouses or dependent children. We don't have the room to bury side by side. If it's a husband, wife, child, husband's at nine feet, wife's at seven, child's at five. One on top of the other. Take another look to your right, everyone, as far as your eyes can see. These are the fallen from both the Korean and Vietnam Wars. Notice how the headstones appear to be in a straight line, no matter which angle you look, and they are. And that's out of respect to the fallen, to show them all in perfect military formation. Now, this first stop coming up is going to be for the John F. Kennedy Family Gravesite. There you'll witness the eternal flame. On John F. Kennedy's right side will be Jackie Bouvier, Kennedy Onassis, and on the right and left side, two pre-deceased children. One daughter baptized, stillborn, no never named, and there's Patrick, who survived for two days. You know, people often ask what happened to John John. Well, let's keep in mind a couple of things. Number one, he never had military service. Number two, he was not a defendant at the time of his death. Therefore, his ashes are spread off the coast of Massachusetts. Everyone, focus on your immediate right. This is a reserve area. This is where quite a few of our former justice and chief justice have been interred. Latest edition, William H. Rehnquist. And that beautiful bouquet of flowers, three rows back in front of that black marble headstone. Four good marshal, first African-American justice. Keep looking to your right up the slight incline. You see that little stone wall right there, people standing on the other side? That's a John F. Kennedy family grave site. Now that wall extends to the left. On that side, Robert Kennedy. And as you look straight ahead, everyone, straight ahead, there's a white wooden cross in the grass. Take a look. That's a final resting place of Ted Kennedy. All right? Ted Kennedy, Robert Kennedy are the only two grave sites in Arlington with a wooden cross. The reason? In their wills, they wanted it as simple as it gets. And it's pretty hard to get more basic than a wooden cross. James Jr., four-star general, United States Air Force. You can see the four stars on this side coming up. African-American. Now, I could talk about him at length, but here's the point. He led the Tuskegee Airmen. Their job was to escort the bomber pilots, and they ended with the reputation of never losing an aircraft. Look straight ahead, straight ahead. Slightly to the left, you can see the top of the Pentagon. I want you to have a sense of where it's positioned. I'm going to talk about the Pentagon in one moment. But before I do, everyone, take a look at the headstones on your left side. You are now looking at the World War II repatriation section. These soldiers were initially interred in graves overseas and through an act of Congress, they've been brought home and reinterred here at Arlington National Cemetery. Now the reason I wanted you to have a sense of where the, the uh, Pentagon is positioned, folks, that's the side of the Pentagon that was hit during 9-11. For those of us out here, we could see the flames and smoke. You can only imagine the chaos at the tomb of the unknown where we're headed, the tomb guards. They were given the opportunity to abandon their post. They did not. That's why when we say the guard has been on duty since 1937, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, rain, shine, sleep, 
snow, including 9-11, we mean that literally. They have never failed. As you stand there watching the ceremony, that large white sarcophagus standing directly in front of you, that's the unknown soldier from World War I. The three tombs directly in front of that, flush to the ground. On your left side, the unknown soldier from World War II. Your right side, the unknown soldier from the Korean War. The one in the middle, Vietnam. But it's because of mitochondrial DNA testing, the one in the middle, Vietnam, was found to be Air Force Lieutenant Michael Blassie. Air Force Lieutenant Michael Blassie has been reinterred at his home in St. Louis, Missouri. It's because of DNA testing we don't expect to have any more unknown soldiers. Now we're going to make a right turn here in a moment. As we make the right turn, if you look to your left between the trees, you can see the Pentagon. And all the way straight down on your left, that's all the way down. You can't see it from here, but that's going toward the Iraq-Afghanistan section. We do not tour by that section out of respect for the families, nor do we tour by the very large slave burial ground. This was once an 1,100-acre slave plantation. So please don't be surprised when you see slave quarters on the backside of Arlington House. Again, a lot of American history tied up right here. You come out here for months on end and always learn something new. Here comes this right turn. Take a look to your left between the trees. And there's the Pentagon. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? I am Sergeant Tim of the 3rd Infantry Regiment, United States Army, Assistant Sergeant of the Guard, Tomb of the Unknown Soul. In keeping with the dignity of this ceremony, it is requested that everyone remain silent and... 